Hello everyone. Indeed. Hello. Today we're going to talk about some important concepts that you need to understand in order to read and comprehend a scientific paper. The first concept we'll explore is motor learning. Motor learning refers to the process of acquiring new motor skills or improving existing ones through practice and repetition. That's right. Alfred. Motor learning involves the coordination of muscles and the ability to make precise movements. It's what allows us to ride a bike, play a musical instrument, or type on a keyboard. Now, let's move on to memory consolidation. Memory consolidation is the process by which newly acquired information becomes stabilized in our long-term memory. Exactly. Alfred. It's like transferring information from our short-term memory to a more permanent storage. This process ensures that newly learned information can be retrieved when needed. Next, let's talk about plasticity. Plasticity refers to the brain's ability to adapt and change in response to experiences or learning. That's right, Alfred. The brain has the incredible ability to reorganize itself, forming new neural connections and pathways. This is what allows us to learn and adapt to new information. Now, let's discuss functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI. It's a powerful technique used to measure brain activity by detecting changes in blood oxygenation and flow. Absolutely. Alfred, fMRI helps researchers understand how different regions of the brain are involved in specific tasks or cognitive processes. It allows us to map brain activity and observe which areas are active or inactive during different types of tasks. Ta Lastly, let's talk about hippocampal activity. The hippocampus is a part of the brain responsible for forming and storing memories. That's correct, Alfred. When we learn something new, the hippocampus plays a crucial role in consolidating that information and transferring it to Long-term memory. Researchers often observe hippocampal activity to understand how memory processes work. So, there you have it. The key concepts needed to understand a scientific paper, motor learning, memory consolidation, plasticity, functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, and hippocampal activity. Understanding these concepts will help you navigate through scientific papers and better grasp the research findings and their implications. That's right, Alice. So, next time you come across a scientific paper, remember to keep these concepts in mind. They'll help you unlock the knowledge hidden within those pages. And that's a wrap. Thank you all for watching. And until next time. Keep learning and exploring the fascinating world of science. End of script. Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about a scientific paper titled, Somatosensory Targeted Memory. Reactivation enhances motor performance via hippocampal mediated plasticity. It's a fascinating study that explores how we can improve motor performance by stimulating specific parts of the brain. That sounds really interesting, Alfred. How do they do it? Well, they used a technique called somatosensory targeted memory reactivation, or TMR for short. During TMR, sensory cues associated with a newly learned motor skill are replayed after learning has ended. In this study, they used electrical stimulation of the fingertips to reactivate a motor memory trace. So, they stimulated the fingers to enhance the memory of a specific motor sequence? Exactly. Participants in the study were trained to perform two sequences of finger movements. During the stimulation session, one of the learned sequences was reactivated using sequential electrical stimulation of the fingers. Involved in the task, the other sequence served as a control. And what did they find? The researchers found that the participants showed faster learning rates for the motor sequence that was reactivated compared to the control sequence.
Brain imaging data revealed that specific brain regions involved in motor learning were specifically reactivated during the TMR episode. They also found that the connectivity between the hippocampus and the frontal cortex was modulated by the reactivation process. That's fascinating. So, stimulating the fingers not only enhanced motor performance but also influenced brain activity. Exactly. The authors suggest that somatosensory TMR during post-learning rest can enhance motor performance by modulating hippocampocortical responses. This research provides important insights into how we can optimize the memory consolidation process and improve motor learning. It's amazing to think about how our brain and body work together to learn and perform motor skills. This research opens up new possibilities for enhancing performance in various domains. Absolutely. By understanding the mechanisms underlying memory consolidation and motor learning, we can develop new techniques and interventions to improve performance in sports, rehabilitation, and other motor-related activities. Thank you, Alfred, for explaining this fascinating research. It's a great reminder of the incredible capabilities of our brain and how we can harness them to enhance our abilities. My pleasure, Alice. It's always exciting to explore the latest advancements in neuroscience and share them with others. Hello everyone. Today, we will be discussing a section of a scientific paper that explores the effects of train. Stimulation on motor memory consolidation and neuronal plasticity. That sounds interesting. Could you explain what the researchers did in this study? Of course. The researchers used a train of 5 1 millisecond long pulses to stimulate the participants. They chose this type of stimulation because it is known to activate sensory nerves in the skin and muscles, which are important for motor memory and plasticity. They wanted to see how the stimulation would affect their performance on a motor task called the serial reaction time task. Ah, so they were interested in whether the stimulation would improve the participants' performance on the task. The exactly. They divided the participants into two groups. One group received the stimulation while they were doing the motor task. And the other group did the task without any stimulation. They then compared their performance on the task before and after the stimulation to see if there were any improvements. And how did they analyze the data? They used statistical analysis software to analyze the data. They performed repeated measures analysis of variance. ANOVA to compare the performance between the two conditions during initial training and retest they also used a two-way ANOVA to examine the offline changes in performance between the two conditions. They used a paired sample t-test to compare the changes in performance on the motor task to a control task to determine whether the improvements were due to motor learning. That's a lot of analysis. Did they find any significant results? Yes, they did. They found that performance on the motor task improved over time for both groups. However, the group that received the stimulation showed greater improvement compared to the group that did not receive the stimulation. This suggests that the stimulation enhanced motor memory consolidation and neuronal plasticity. That's fascinating. So. The stimulation actually improved their ability to learn and remember the motor task? Yes, exactly. The stimulation seemed to enhance the participants' ability to learn and remember the motor task. This suggests that train stimulation can be a useful tool for improving motor learning and memory. Thank you for explaining that, Alfred. It sounds like this research could have practical applications in fields like rehabilitation and sports training. Absolutely. The findings of this study have important implications for those fields. By understanding how stimulation affects motor memory consolidation and neuronal plasticity, 
we can develop new strategies to enhance motor learning and performance. Well, that's certainly exciting. Thank you for sharing this research with us, Alfred. You're welcome, Alice. It was my pleasure to explain it. Hello everyone. Today, we will be discussing a fascinating study on the effects of somatosensory targeted memory. Reactivation, or TMR, on motor memory consolidation. That's right. This study examined how TMR applied during a period of rest after motor learning influenced subsequent motor performance. They used a combination of behavioral measures and functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI, to gain a better understanding of the neural mechanisms underlying the effects of TMR. The researchers found that TMR during rest enhanced the motor memory consolidation process. Participants who received TMR showed a faster learning rate when they were tested again on the motor task. That's really interesting. The study also looked at the brain activity of participants using fMRI. They found that TMR modulated activity in the hippocampus, a brain region associated with memory consolidation. Specifically, hippocampal activity increased as participants improved their performance on the motor task. The researchers also found that TMR-induced changes in brain activity were correlated with the behavioral effects of TMR in particular. They observed a decrease in activity in the cerebellum and frontal cortex, which are regions involved in motor memory consolidation. Yes, and these changes in brain activity were related to the TMR-induced improvement in motor performance. It seems that TMR during rest enhances the consolidation of motor memories by modulating activity in specific brain regions. Absolutely. And it's worth noting that the effects of TMR were dependent on practice during the retest. The advantage of TMR on performance decreased over time, suggesting that its effects are practice dependent. That's an important point. The study also examined the effects of TMR on offline changes in performance, which are changes that occur without further practice. Interestingly, they found that TMR did not influence these offline changes. That's correct. This suggests that TMR primarily affects motor performance during practice and does not have a significant impact on offline memory consolidation. Overall. This study provides valuable insights into the effects of TMR on motor memory consolidation. By understanding the neural mechanisms underlying these effects, we can potentially develop more targeted interventions to enhance learning and memory. That's a great summary, Alice. It's fascinating to see how TMR can enhance motor memory consolidation and how it modulates activity in specific brain regions. This research opens up exciting possibilities for future studies in this area. Absolutely. Alfred, this study highlights the importance of rest and targeted stimulation in optimizing memory. Consolidation. Thank you all for joining us today. And we hope you found this discussion informative. Hello everyone. Today, we will be discussing a recent scientific paper that explores the fascinating topic of sleep and memory consolidation. That's right, Alfred. Sleep has long been known to play a crucial role in memory formation. But the exact mechanisms involved are still not fully understood. This study aimed to uncover some of the mysteries behind this process. Absolutely, Alice. The researchers focused on the consolidation of motor sequence memory, which refers to our ability to learn and perform specific movements or sequences of movements. They wanted to understand how sleep influences this type of memory. To do that, they conducted a series of experiments with human participants. They used a combination of behavioral tasks and neuroimaging techniques to measure brain activity. During wakefulness and sleep, interestingly, they found that both the hippocampus and striatum, two brain regions involved in memory processing, 
play a role in the consolidation of motor sequence memory. They observed changes in neural activity within these regions during sleep that were associated with improved motor skills. Right, Alfred. It seems that sleep enhances the consolidation of motor sequence memory by strengthening the connections between different brain regions involved in motor learning. This process helps to solidify the memory and make it more resistant to forgetting. Additionally, the researchers found that memory reactivation during sleep, achieved through external cues, further improved motor skill learning. This suggests that targeted memory reactivation during sleep can enhance the consolidation process. Absolutely. Alfred, this finding has exciting implications for potential therapeutic interventions for individuals who struggle with motor learning and memory impairments. By targeting specific memories during sleep, we might be able to enhance their retention and improve overall performance. That's a great point, Alice. The findings from this study not only add to our understanding of the complex relationship between sleep and memory, but they also have practical implications for improving motor learning and memory consolidation. Definitely. Alfred, sleep is often undervalued, but this research shows just how important it is for our cognitive processes. So, the next time you're learning a new motor skill, remember to get a good night's sleep to give your brain a chance to consolidate that memory. That's right, Alice. Sleep is not only restorative for our bodies, but it also plays a crucial role in enhancing our cognitive abilities. Thank you for joining us today. And we hope you found this exploration of sleep and memory consolidation fascinating.